We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight's question is something unique and new. Now, this question didn't come through our website or at questions at tabletopbellhop.com email or even any of our social media accounts. This one actually came through my at tabletop underscore deals Twitter account where I share the best board game deals from all over the web. Now, Uncle Rico writes, at tabletop underscore deals, any good word-based party game recommendations? I love Decrypto. This was, of course, a comment on a sale post about Decrypto. Yeah, I'll take it. You know what? Back when our, our, our podcast segues used to be a bit longer, we kind of condensed the show down so we get to the monkey a little quicker. I used to say something to the extent of, I'll take your gaming questions anywhere, and that's still true. I'm all for people asking Big Dude Likes Food, my food port account, for game suggestions too. I mean, you post enough pizza pics, I wouldn't at all uh, be surprised to see some New York Slice questions pop yep. up, or perhaps some more unlabeled questions with your craft beer reviews. Um, I'm all for it. You want, you want, we're going to play some sushi go. We can talk about the best sushi or the other way around. You want to talk about the best sushi game? I'll tell you about the best sushi game. All right. So on to uncle Rico's question. I do dig it though. I like, I like that it came in from an unusual source there. So word based party games. eh? That's, that's what we're looking for. Rico. Um, I don't think we need a lengthy talk about what that means. Often when we're like, we're going to do train games. We need to sit here and debate what a train game is. I think this is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. But just in case, I do want to explain. I limited my game picks tonight to games that involve words in some way. So there's a mix of word guessing games, spelling games, clue giving, guess the word style games. So I didn't limit to like just games where you have to spell or just games where you have the words. Sometimes you got to write down words. Sometimes you got to guess clues. I also specifically pit games at a higher player count. I wanted party games, big groups. To me, party meant a lot of people, not just fun. So, for example, a little wordy. We reviewed this recently. I think this is a great, quick filler word game from uh, the people that brought you Exploding Kittens, their first real strategy game. But it's two player only. So it didn't hit the list tonight. Not even in honorable mentions. Throw out a little wordy. Doesn't apply. I also specifically looked for games that were social, that got people uh, interacting and having fun together. Like, well, Scrabble may be the world's most popular word game. Staring at letters and looking at a board, trying to maximize your points isn't what I'd call a party. And to be fair, what I saw when I was Googling today listed as the most popular party game we don't support here at Bellhop's Tabletop. And also, I don't really consider it a word game. So... <laughs> To be honest, I, I, it is going to the, the there is a tie in in our honorable mentions. I think it's in our honorable mention. Maybe it's in the main list. No, it's in, the main, it's in the main list. Oh, it's in the main list. So there is a tie in to the most popular game. And that <sighs> is one I was a little iffy on. But we'll get to that in just a second because I want to start off with oh, wait, wait, one more thing I do want to point out. I am not a huge word game fan. So we don't own a lot. Now, my wife digs word game fans, so we don't own some, but we do not have a huge collection of word games, unlike some other categories I really do enjoy. Um, so today's list is going to feature a larger than usual number of honorable mentions. As usual, this list is in no particular order. All right, number one is code names. Uh, this is one case where I am actually going to recommend code names and not code names to it. Almost every game recommendation we get to list we get to, and someone wants us to put code names on the list, or I want to put it. I, I almost always recommend Duet. Now, Duet works great as a team game. It's a fantastic two-player game, but it also works good with teams of two or three players. But after that, it falls apart. Once you get to the higher player counts, you want the original code names, uh, possibly some variant of the original code names. This is a game you can really play. I don't know what it says in the box, but with any number of people, as long as everyone can gather around and see the board in some way. And they even make a deluxe version or an uh, extra large version to facilitate that. I have seen a 30 person player, 30 player game of code names with 15 per side. It does work. Now, for those of you who don't know the game, this is a team-based word guessing game where code givers are trying to get members of their team to guess specific words on a grid of cards on the table before the other team guesses their words on the table, with both teams trying to avoid the dreaded assassin, which eliminates your team if they guess it. That's the very quick summary. And that was Code Names. Next, I have Letter Jam. 
Now, when working on this list, I got to admit, I wasn't sure if I was going to include Letter Jam or not, uh, based on what I just said I limited my list down to. Um, once I realized just how few word games I actually own, I decided to include it, despite the fact that this can be rather thinky and maybe isn't the, the, the raucous party game as some of the other games on this list. And it does only play up to six players. Now, this is a mix of spelling and word guessing game in one with deduction aspects. In this cooperative game, players can't see their own letter cards, and each round someone gives a clue, and players try to guess the word that clue is using the letters they can see, only knowing what order the letters they go in, including the one they can't see. They attempt to use this info to guess what their personal letters are. Now, at the end of the game, if everyone can spell a word with their letters, you all win. Now you played this one. So I, is that an app description? Trap words is not, or sorry, letter jam is not an easy game to describe, but I think that kind of covers it. Yeah, no, I think that covers it. Uh, it, it is definitely a game that should be experienced uh, yes. but more than, more than heard about. <clears throat> Fair enough. And that was letter jam. And you caught that slip. I just said trap words. That's because I was looking down the page and that's the next one on the list. Uh, this is another Team-based game, right? Split up, uh, kind of like code names, with a dungeon crawl theme. Players advance through the dungeon by getting their teammates to guess the right word. The twist is that the other team gets to set a number of traps or trap words. If you use one of these words, the trap goes off and you fail to advance. Along with this is a system of curses that act as a catch-up mechanic and end-game boss fights with additional limitations added to the play on what can be guessed or what you have to do or what clues you can get. If your team manages to get to the boss monster and defeat them before the other team does, you win. And that was Trap Words. Now, those are pretty hobby game-like, right? Like, code names are starting to spread everywhere, but let's go to a classic. This is a game from the 1980s, I think it's 84, and that is Balderdash. This is a game that is still a lot of fun today. This is a game where everyone gets an obscure word and then has to write down their own definition of that word. Then everything's shuffled up and players vote for the definition they think is correct, including a card that has the actual dictionary definition. Now there is one aspect of this game I do not like. There is a meta game here that you can learn, you have to learn to make your definitions sound like Balderdash definitions, if that makes sense, like whatever dictionary they used. And you're gonna do way better than everyone else if you can at least make your sound it because the, the official definition always kind of sticks out as sounding like an official definition. So there is a metagame there, but once you get past that, it's a really sweet game. Though I do have to say this is very vocabulary based, so it's not gonna work all that great with younger kids or with people with limited vic vocabularies though i've got to say playing with kids you'll probably laugh your butts off at what they come up with though you may never think they're the proper answers i still have fun playing balderdash it, it is a solid game absolutely balderdash has been around for ages uh i actually love the new box cover they've got i sure. uh, i didn't recognize it as balderdash they, they've really gone for a more artistic uh design lately and yep. uh, on that was balderdash Actually, it's cool to know it's still in print. I assumed it was, but I hadn't actually seeked it out. Set, sought it out? I hadn't actually sought it out. All right, next. When I started making this list, uh, I almost didn't think of this game because I didn't think Bananagrams was a high player count game. In my head, Bananagrams is something I play with my wife. This is like a two player game. And I think I remember playing at the local game store with like three or four. I had no clue that Bananagrams played eight players. Like, I totally missed that fact and all the times I've seen the game. Now, I will admit, this is a solid game. Like, Banana Grand is a great game. It's really fast, rapid. Everyone plays at the same time, trying to grab word tiles and spell out uh, Scrabble-like crossword stuff. But I have to admit, I didn't try it with this many players. I do like it with a low player count. And the fact that this showed up on many other people's best party game lists I got to say, this would be a good one for a party. I just haven't tried it myself, but Bananagrams is a win as far as a word game goes. Just haven't tried it with the full eight players. And that was Bananagrams. Next, I have another classic game. I don't know what's older between this and Boulder Dash, but Taboo. Now, this is obviously the game CGE or whoever the designer of uh, Trap Words was looking at when they made it. Like, personally, I'll admit, I'd rather play Trap Words. Trap Words is a little more involved, a bit more of a Euro game, and it has that cool dungeon theme. But I can't discredit Taboo as a great word game. 
Now, where taboo differs from trap words is that the words you can't use are on the clue card. So the clue giver has something they need you to say, and then they have a list of five words that they can't use to get you to say it. And if they say one of those words, they, they get eliminated. And it's another team-based one where you're talking to your team, the other team's talking to theirs. And then the other team gets to see those, those taboo words and calls you out when you screw it up. I think this is a great game. Personally, I would rather go with trap words. To me, that's more thematic. But if you've got, especially if you're playing with non-gamers or family, you might want to just stick to the original taboo. I cannot believe every time I play this, how hard it is to not use those taboo words. Like whoever sat down and did the, the mental math of figuring out, you know, you want to say the word pill, but like medicine, jar, and like, like whoever came up with those five things you can't say is brilliant. And that was Taboo. Next is one of my favorite games on the list tonight, one I strongly recommend picking up, even if it's not just for playing party games, and that is Medium. Now, I will say this plays up to eight, and I actually prefer this at the lower player counts. Uh, the problem with Medium is downtime between turns, because you're going to pair off with a partner to your left, and then you're going to guess up to three words, and that can take a little while. And then it has to go to the next pair, and the next pair, and the next pair. So once you're up to eight players, this can get slow. Now, if you're playing a nice casual game night where people are wandering around and chatting, this is the kind of thing that'll work where you can kind of wander around for the table and come back when it's your turn. Though it is often enjoyable to watch other people play. Now, this is a game where players have hands of cards and choose one card to play face up in front of them with a partner who also plays a word. Then both players try to make a psychic connection and say the word that's the medium, the, the, the thing that's common between two words on those two face up cards. They go one, two, three, say the word. If they get it right, they get some points. If they fail, they then try again. But this time they have to use the words they just said. Again, if they get it right, they get some points. Then if they fail again, they get one more try. And then it just goes around the table. There's a timing mechanism. Whoever has the most points wins. Really solid game, though, like I said, have something else for players to do once you get to higher player counts. And that was medium. Next is the most gimmicky, toyerific, kind of silly looking game on this list, and that is Tapple. I don't know how to describe this thing. Like it's like a Frisbee with letters on the edges. It's this rather large disc shaped thing with a red switch thing in the middle and a number, a bunch of switches on the outside. And these switches all have letters on them. Um, they're not the full alphabet, but it's some of them. Now a category is drawn from a deck and it'll say uh, types of fish or something, right? I honestly, every time I play this game, we throw out the deck and we just come up with some of our own geeky things. Like, trust me, Tapple is way more fun when you go, you have to name Star Trek alien species. At least in my opinion, it's more fun. Then you you turn the game on. You like push the switch on it. It starts counting down. You don't see it. And the game becomes hot potato. You pass the tapple to someone. They have to say a Star Trek alien or whatever your category is and hit the letter that that Star Trek alien starts. And then they pass to the next player and they say Vulcans and hit the V. And then they pass it. So it's Klingons. It hits a K and eventually it like buzzes. Then when it buzzes, the person who's holding the thing is eliminated. I This game is way more fun than it has any right to be. This is one Sean needs to play at an extra light, but I don't own a copy. I need to get John Salilo to bring his copy out because he's the one that introduced me to this game. Simple, gimmicky, over the top, but so much fun. And that was Tapple. Next, I have Nitwit. This is a two to eight player word game that to me is Venn diagram the board game. Now at the start of each round, you're going to put down a spool and then you put a string around it. You attach a word to that string. And you don't pick the word, you draw it randomly. Then the next person puts down a spool and puts a rope out and they have to cover their spool, but nothing else. But they could cover the first one. And you keep doing this until there's like eight spools out with all these strings around. Then players have to look at the spool, see what it's surrounded by, which words are it surrounded by, and then come up with a word that fits all those words that it's surrounded by. And I got to say, this is harder to describe in words than it should be. Like if I showed you this in person, you get it right away. It just makes perfect sense. Now, while this one isn't really high rated, I did not see this recommended for, by many people and it's actually bar bargain basement prices all the time. So I don't know why this didn't take off. I love this game. I love trying to come up with words that fit multiple incongruous categories, like cute purple and sharp. Well, that was nitwit. So I was hoping Sean would come up with something cute purple and sharp. No, I'm not, not even. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping it didn't happen. I dig that game. Uh, next, I have the one we alluded to earlier. 
that is apples to apples. I'll admit, I, is it a word game? Uh, the, the one cards are single words and then there's not single words. I, I decided to include it again. Number of games that word games I played is a fairly small list and I'm only taking the top. So apples to apples, you draw a random description card. This is a work, right? This is a descriptor or something that's described. Then every player secretly chooses a thing card from their hand that matches that description. So it might say fuzzy, and then you're going to play things. And then the active player then picks the one they think is the best pairing. So like with fuzzy, you've got blanket, doll, and apple. And then part of the game is everyone go, why the hell did you put apple? And like, well, when it goes moldy, they go fuzzy. And you're like, oh, okay, that was a stretch. That's a big part of apple, apples to apples. Now, the classic game, this game has kind of exploded, right? This has inspired so many knockoffs and variants, including almost all of the popular white text on black background party games, many of which are not safe for work. I personally have had way more fun with the original apples to apples where not safe for work connections are implied and not overt and thrown in your face. And that is our uh, love of party game apples to apples and not the black and white card version. Yes. The, the black text on or white text on black cards and black text on white cards games. There are many. Uh, my final one tonight, I know shorter list than usual, is Train of Thought. Uh, this is a really unique game that, that requires an interesting, like your brain works in a neat way playing this. You're going to get, the, the person giving the clues gets two cards. And they have different numbers on, one to six. You're going to roll a die, and you're going to look up that number on both cards. One of those cards is face up, so everyone can see it. The other one, you hide. You then look at the two clues with that number, and you need to make a connection. Uh, and you are going to try to make a train of clues from the word on the face-up card to the word on your hand in your hand. Now, this is done by giving a three-word clue. Now, your first three-word clue has to include that face-up word. But then your clues going forward have to be based on the people's guesses. So you give your first clue and people give you single-word clues. Your next three-word clue has to be based on one of the clues the person said. And then they're going to guess again. And then you have to base that off one they said. And then you're going to keep doing that, building a train of thought to hopefully the word in your hand before time runs up. I think this is a really neat one just because it makes you think in an interesting way. It, it makes you, it, you play very different from other word games. It's all about making the connections between the words, not only just the words on the table and the one in the hand, but what people are saying and integrating that into your train. So you can actually make a real six degrees of separation between Bacon yes. and Kevin. <laughs> that is true. And that was Train of Thought. All right, on to our honorable mentions. As usual, honorable mentions are games I did not put on the main list for one reason or another, and every single one of these games is because I have not played them yet. So these are great sounding word games that I have not had the pleasure to play games that have come up on other people's recommendation lists or games that I just saw while doing research on word games that went, that sounds really neat. So the first one is of course, just one, one of these days, I am going to get a copy of just one, or I'm going to get to play a copy of just one. So I don't have to keep putting it. And it seems like every honorable mention game recommendation, we episode, we do. When we talk about filler games, I mentioned just one. We talk about word games. I honorable mention just one. We talk about short games that are easy to learn. I mentioned just one. I still haven't played it. This game sounds great. Um, I've heard pretty much all positive things about this game. Uh, this is a party game where one player is trying to guess a word. Everyone else is giving clues with the trick being that each clue given has to be unique. If two players give the same clue, they cancel out and the clue giver doesn't, they're, so the guesser doesn't get to hear the clue. Uh, it just sounds great. This sounds dead easy. Um, sounds simple to learn. Now I have heard uh, actually from one of our Patreon patrons that this does not work that great when playing with younger kids, uh, mostly due to them having a vocab more limited voc vocabulary, as well as sticking to like really simple, easily repeated clues. So they'd say the same thing. Like you say red and both kids just automatically say apple or hot or something like that. I just one sounds fantastic. And like, I feel bad that I haven't played it. Now, part of that's a pandemic. I have a feeling if we didn't hit a pandemic, I would have given you a, probably a full review on just one. And I'm pretty sure it belonged on the full list. Uh, and to be fair, that uh, that patron did have more fun with their family in just one today. And so part of it might have been exhaustion from uh, all the fun they were having before they got to just one. Oh, there you go. It, it, I guess you need some energy to play just one. <laughs> 
Next, I have Decrypto. Now, when this game hit the market at cons, I can't remember if it was Origins or Gen Con, wherever PAX, whatever, wherever it hit, man, there was a lot of buzz, like ton. It was one of those, every podcast was talking about Decrypto. Every time anyone brought up party games, we were like, oh, have you played your crypto yet? It was huge. And unlike many of the games, um, the buzz hasn't completely died down. I still see people talking about how much they love Decrypto. Now, this quick party game takes up to eight players who are broken into teams. Each round, one player on the team is trying to pass on a secret code to their partners with the opponents getting a chance to potentially intercept that code between rounds. So this is done using like um, the old Transformers thing with the red sheets that go over a word to be able to see your word. As far as I can tell, it doesn't actually serve any purpose in the game except to be neat. And then you're trying to get your po- your people to guess th- your words in a certain order based on a clue card. And then if you fail, your opponent's team then has gotten to listen to you this whole time, right? So they've gotten to hear the clues and and the words. They then get a guess to see if they get the code right. And then if they're wrong, you get to play another round and it keeps going back and forth. And the neat part is this is simultaneous. So while you're playing, like someone on your team kind of has to be listening in on the other team. Sounds really neat. I would love to try this one out. This this I need to sit down and play to, to give a final verdict on, but it sounds really cool. And uh, I mentioned the chat room with uh, you can play that more than eight, much like code names. OK, the box said or board game geek said up to eight. So fair right. enough. Yeah. That's actually even better. And that was Decrypto. All right. Next is where words <laughs> longtime fans of the show should know why I haven't played this one myself. Um, this is a word guessing game based on the social deduction party game. Werewolf or otherwise known as Mafia. Um I, I am not a fan of those two games. Now, Where Words is basically a game of 20 questions where one of the players is a werewolf and who knows the answer and is trying to mislead the other players. So they're asking, you know, misleading questions or whatever. They're not the ones saying yes or no, but like they're going to ask dumb questions, to try to mislead people. Dumb again being the wrong word. Sorry. They're, they're, they're going to they're gonna ask misleading questions. Now, the neat bit here is if they don't get the answer in 20 questions, the, the players, the heroes, get one last chance to identify the werewolf. And if they identify the werewolf, they still win. And I got to say, you know what? I should give this a shot. Like, like just doing my research, my actual due diligence this time and reading how to play werewords, actually watch the how to play video. I was like, okay, that doesn't seem so bad. It, it honestly sounds quite different from werewolf or mafia. I may actually enjoy this. This doesn't involve outright lying to people like, oh, no, I'm, a, I'm not a werewolf. You're not doing that in this game. Well, as far as I can tell, it's the the, the actual the, the actual play I saw didn't have that. It was more people just talking about, uh, like I said, misleading clues and not, oh, are you the werewolf? No, you're not. The, we remember three rounds ago when you did this or, or you gave him the side eye. And you don't have the problems of a moderator and people closing their eyes and opening their eyes. I should give it a shot. I'll admit I'll try it. I'm not going to rush out and buy it blind. But if someone locally has it, I'll finally if I go to QCC, Sean Gilgore, are you listening? I'll play where words next time. And that was where words. <laughs> Next, I have spell smashers. As implied by this name, this is another word spelling game where you're going to combine letter cards in your hand to spell words. Now, what's neat about this is it's supposed to be based on JRPGs and the words you're spelling are used to battle monsters and acquire treasure and do damage. Every time you damage a monster, you get coins that you can spend when you go to town. And if you manage to defeat a monster, you get another letter card so you can build bigger words in the future rounds. Between rounds, there's a whole system for going shopping in town. I don't even know what you buy or what you do with it. It, but this just sounds fun this sounds neat it sounds thematic now without having played it i can't tell you how much of a party element it has now it does say it's only playable to five players so this one falls in honor mention for two reasons one i didn't play it and two i'm not sure if it's really a party game it might be more involved than it looks but i gotta say it sounds cool i want to play this game this just sounds awesome well that was spell smashers <laughs> next i have when i dream while this does have the same player count issue with, um, sorry, doesn't have the same player count issue as a spell spanner. This plays up to 10 and it does say it's under 40 minutes. I'm not sure this is a party game. This sounds really unique. This is one of the most unique. This is the most unique game on this list. Well, I don't know. Tapple might count for totally different reasons. This is a pretty unique game. So each round, one player is a dreamer who puts on a sleep mask so they can't see. 
the other players are playing spirits and there's like three factions of spirits there's like happy spirits and naughty spirits and trickster spirits can switch teams i don't don't quite get how that works having not played the game but then the spirits are going to draw dream cards and they're going to give one word clues describing the card they have so here's where the word game part comes in now the dreamer tries to guess what dream element that represents and based off the right or wrong the cards go into two different piles again that that has to do with the trickster and happy spirit thing now that sounds interesting enough on its own but then at the end of the round the person who is the dreamer then has to tell a story using all the words they said through their dream and turn it and and tell everyone the dream like an actual improv rpg element then they take their eyes off And I got to say, this sounds really neat, but doesn't really make any sense reading about it. And even I watched uh, like a how to play, but the how to play didn't like was very mechanical. This seems like it would make a lot more sense in person. And I got to say it. I like the combination of word guessing and an RPG storytelling element. Like here's the word game I want to play with Jeff and Sheila. Uh, Apparently there's also a traitor in When I Dream. Yeah, that's the whole thing with the spirits, right? Like there, there's there's trickster spirits and there's something with the spirits where they're giving misleading clues. That's the part of the game I didn't quite get just being able to read about it. And like I said, I did watch a how to play, but it was very mechanical. So it was a little confusing. All right. And that was When I Dream. All right. Here's my last one. Word on the street. We've mentioned this one before. This is a lightning quick team game where there's a street, a board with a street. I don't know how many lanes there are, but the, the amount of lanes would definitely affect the difficulty. But the median in the middle has most of the English consonants. Not all of them, but most of them, like J's missing, or I don't even know what's missing. Some are mi- Q is not there. I know Q's not there for sure. I think V might be missing an X. But anyway, there's a bunch of consonants. Each round, team's given a category. Now, again, what I recommend for this game, and what I've heard makes it more fun, is toss out the category cards and use your own say Star Wars planets or something more interesting than, than types of fish. And then you set a timer. And then for each word you're able to say before the timer runs out, you can move the letters in that word one step closer. Now, if the letters in the word more than once, you still only move one step, but you can move all of the consonants that are in your words towards your side of the street. And then the round ends and the next team gets to do it. And you get this tug of war with the letters going back and forth. Now, if you do manage to get a letter off the board, you get to claim it. And the first team to claim eight letters to their own side wins the game. And that's it. I really dig the concept of this. Ever, I don't remember what episode I first saw, discovered this game, but it sounds fantastic. The only thing I want to see is if there's some timing rules, because it sounds like lots of hands trying to move things at once to me. And I, I have to assume there's something there to mitigate that. But this sounds like a great party game where you've got a table, like you're, you're, you're sitting at a table playing, not, you know, acting out stuff or, or just yelling at each other. And that was Word on the Street. That's it for our list of best word-based party games. Now, before we move on, I do want to point people to episode 75 of our podcast. This was titled, Can I Have a Word? And what we talked about there was our favorite word games. Now, this was word games overall, without the focus on party games. So there are games there we did not mention tonight, like Hardback and Letter Tycoon, which I think are fantastic, uh, like heavier uh, designer games, right? More gamer games than, than some of these lighter games. You can also check out our 18 of the best word-based board games article on the blog. As usual, link in the show notes. Now, remember, if you've got a game or game night question for us, all you got to do is head over to the website and click on Ask the Bellhop. Now, let's head over to the lobby and see what they have to add. All right, lobbyists, you have been busy tonight. Yes, the lobby it's been was awesome. Fantastic. I was trying, there were some there. I was trying to decide if I interject or not. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm just going to go with it. We're just going to, we're going to stream through this and then we'll get to all your suggestions after. So I'm going to start scrolling back. I see Brilligerent. Thanks for joining us. This is the first time I've seen you in our chat room and it's always welcome to have new people talking about Time's Up is a favorite in their group time's up that is not once i see it i'll know it I and bgg it. is back up so you can do you can check it now um uh there was also a little yeah, bit of discussion you know about... what you know what i know about time's up it's always on sale that's right. all i can tell you and it has an awesome um instead of an hourglass it's little beads that spin down 
Right. To be honest, that's all I know. I know nothing else about Time Zone. Uh, hardback did come up, and we addressed uh, that at the end there. Yeah, we that, love that game. It's just not really a party game. No, there, there, there is no party aspect to Hardback. Yeah. <laughs> None at all. The, it is the anti-party game. Uh, we've it's got the, so very so very wrong about games mentioning The Chameleon. I, I know Jeff Seuss really digs that game. That's one I have not played. Um, I was concerned when it first came out that I thought it was one of those... Um, black text on white cards and white text on black cards kind of games. Right. Though I've since learned it's not. Um, that is a, a hidden role social deduction element. So I, I, again, I am not a fan of that type of game. So that may be one reason why I would stay away from that one personally. I have heard good things, but it didn't make my list because I, I am not a fan of hidden trailer, hidden element games. All right. Well, uh, some lot of love for Decrypto out there. Uh, and just one as well. Nitwit did not was not enjoyed by uh, by belligerent. Oh, that's um, too bad. I, mean, so, I guess people. I don't know. I really liked Nitwit. Uh, let me see here. Uh, if you have some folks on a Zoom night, High Clue H A I C L U E is on Board Game Arena for fun. A nice little word game. Oh, that is not one I have heard of. Uh, and yeah, so that that one is on Board Game Arena available. Uh, we've got, uh, also, I got a bunch from Ryan here. Yep. Uh, unspeakable words. words. I am not a fan of that game. I, no. I do not like it. I do not actually, uh, enjoy unspeakable words. Um, it's too chaotic and it fits the theme. It's all about spelling stuff for Cthulhu. So the whole thing in that game is the points on the letters are based on how many angles they have, which is kind of amusing because it's arbitrary. Um, but there's always, there's, there's a rule there where after spelling a word, you have to roll a d20. And if you roll, you have to roll less than the number of, no, because the more the more letters you use the heart, the bigger risk you have. So you have to try to roll higher than whatever your word is. And if you don't, you have to take a little Cthulhu statue or you lose one. I can't remember if you take them or lose them. And if you have too many, you're out of the game. But when you're on your, you lose them. Because when you're on your last Cthulhu statue, you can then go full on cultist and spell any word you want. The only rule is that you have to try to pronounce it. And you can literally mix the letters however you want. The combination of the dice rolls and it, it's just it's random, arbitrary fun. And like I, I don't like playing word games with my wife sometimes because her vocabulary is better. But I do like that to count for something <laughs> as opposed to just whoever rolled better winning the game. Although I got to say that does sound like a 2 a.m. Uh, extra life game. Yeah, I guess <laughs> I, I can I, guess. I can totally see myself and or Tori trying to pronounce. Oh, that, that last part's thought. awesome. That, that yeah, yeah. last rule. I, I love that rule. That rule's great. But the, the rest of the game, the, like I said, the whole arbitrary like eyes are worth one point. But for some reason, you want to use as ease, I think, are, are worth the most. Whereas ease, one of the most common words in the English language, like it's just it, it's irrational, which, again, fits the theme well, but not my fan, not a fan. Uh, also, he mentions uh, uh, Wordsy. Why do I know that one? I can't remember what. I know the name. I can't picture it. I can't picture it. Wordsy, uh, great podcast here as I look up stuff. <laughs> uh, he also mentions. Oh, it's up newer, 2017. Okay, I don't know Wordsy. I have not played it. What a nice looking cover. That right. looks like it might be one of those not a party game. No, 20 minutes, six players. Okay. Uh, also, uh, upwards, which again, love no. the game, not a party game. Yeah, uh, letter letter ty 100%. letter tycoon, same thing, same thing, and paperback hardback. Again, we've already yeah. addressed that same one. Thing. Those are those are sort of all shifting across that party line into into yeah. game nine and uh, into word based games. Now, so very wrong about grain says you play just one, but use code name cards and pads of paper. Okay, like all I'd have to do is download the rules. Yeah. The game's supposed to be so good, I just kind of want to play it as like it's intended. But yeah, that would work. Yeah. Well, that's like earlier tonight, it's kind of amusing. Um, I had uh, Grace try to bring up the games for our backdrop, and they couldn't find code names. And well, it's because I combined duet and code names in one box because the uh, clues are interchangeable. Right. And it's all in my duet box because, I, as I mentioned, I actually prefer duet as a game. Uh, so very wrong about games was 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 playing along and, and somehow get, staying a step ahead of us at one point where yeah, you know, calling that. out calling out the games that we were about to talk about. That was impressive. <laughs> um, they'd be really good at medium. And there they, we go. They, there they we go. Over play some medium. Kevin, Kevin's uh, our, how about Boggle? Again, not a party game to me. 
I don't know. I mean, it was kind of, I, I remember playing with, with like large groups of people in grade really? school. Oh, um, see, I, I don't think of Boggle as a party game myself. To me, that's a, a thinky, you don't speak, you don't socialize, you just write down words, and then you get frustrated because someone else guessed your words, and then you do a bunch of math. To me, that doesn't sound like a party. But Right. And I've never played with like more than four people. Boggle is loud. Yes, it is. Very yes, true. Is. All right. Oh, uh, that's what it was. So did I upload our no my notes to the wrong thing? Did I put them on the um, Bridge City <laughs> Gamers uh, uh, Discord instead, or not Discord, Drive instead of ours? Is that what go. I did? I guess say Wordsy looks neat. Letter Tycoon, I think Sean needs to play, but I don't actually own it. It, it went out of print and hard to find, hard I've, after. The one, the one that was confusing me, we have talked about Word on the Street before. Because yes. you're describing it, and I'm like, why this game sounds super familiar and i don't know why but maybe I, maybe it's from the episode 18 or whatever yeah i'm pretty or sure it episode was. 75 or whatever because i mean i'm like you're describing this i'm like yeah why have we, we have. talked about this game i like there, there is definitely some overlap here right yeah yeah no, i know 